So day two of the tour here, actually it's kind of day three, but second day of touring around uh, Switzerland. We're at a local trade school, and I don't know what to expect, but we're gonna check out maybe what it's like to get into, into the trades in another country, because I'm assuming it's different than what it's like in America. So we had a pretty cool opportunity today uh, on day three of the Swiss tour where we got to go to a local trade school, totally different than anything that you experience in the US. These kids make a decision around 15 years of age typically, and they come to this place to learn for three to four years a trade. They're already most likely sponsored by a company and that company pays for them to come here to be trained, to be educated. And when they leave, they're a fully you know, vetted carpenter to go out and make a living. They also get paid while they're here in school. So just, it's totally crazy to think about this as an option because us as Americans, we throw our kids into a job, maybe if they're not successful in school or even the kids that do wanna go into the trades, they just go start working for a company and the education is based on whatever that company wants to teach them versus learning an actual accredited skill. So great opportunity, met a lot of great kids, talked to a lot of the instructors, you know, how they do it all, and uh, definitely something that Americans could improve upon in the education system for sure. All right guys, so we're at job site number two, and we're at this residential slash commercial job site, new construction. Um, this is like a hybrid construction, so we've got concrete, wood, and I'm really hoping that we can see some details here in Switzerland that we're not used to at home. So let's go in, take a look, and see what we can find. What kind of a core drill did that? Uh, I know Superman could do it. Okay. Die Holzlattung. Ähm, relativ zügig, nachdem wir die Membrane ausgerollt haben, gerade drauf, dass ja. es gerade durchheben. Okay, ja. So we're out here on the roof, and what you'll notice is this is all flat. This is a multi-family and commercial space, and they've basically maxed out the height that this building can be. Big issue in Switzerland is, is real estate. So they're building higher, but they also have to, you know, accommodate the height restrictions. So in the US, a lot of our residential buildings are gonna be, have a pitched roof, a sloped roof, but that takes additional height to do that. Hence why we've got this uh, flat roof here. And it's kind of cool because this is pre, you know, flash. So there's no flashings or counter flashings yet. They've got the, the rubber hot roof rolled up, all their penetrations all sealed off. And I don't think we were supposed to actually be up here, but we kind of snuck up here and now everybody's up here. So, so check this out. This is uh, an access point for a sensor on this roof. And what they've got is they've got a, an eight inch CLT structure on this roof. Then they've got one layer of about four inches of foam, actually about six inches of foam that's all flat. And then they have a sloped foam layer that's uh, layered on top of that so that there's no overlapping joints. And in here is a sensor that is hooked up to wires that run on this entire roof assembly to let you know if there's a leak. So as soon as there's a problem with this roof, it's gonna throw a sensor alarm and you're gonna know you have an issue before you actually have the issue. Now on top of this system with the wires that are ran underneath of this sealed roof, there's gonna be another layer and underneath that layer is another wire that's ran around. They'll be able to tell you exactly where the leak is. You're gonna get that impedance or error at that point in the wire and you're gonna be able to know right where your leak is. And we all know how hard it is to find a leak in a roof. Not that I know, I've, I've never actually had a roof leak for us, but I've heard. Hey, so I was walking around the job site and this is Jake Bruton. Jake is actually not too far from us. He's in 
Columbia, Missouri. Yeah, Columbia, Missouri. Um, I like to go down to the lake there in Missouri. But he was like, dude, come look at these windows. And I thought it was cool enough to show you guys. Jake, what did you just show me? Because it's pretty amazing. Sure. So let's start with, it says 4B on the handle. That's the manufacturer. Okay. There's a guy walking around the job site right now with a 4B shirt on, hitting all these hinges with a wrench, functioning the windows, everything. So the manufacturer comes here in Europe, or at least in Switzerland, they sold you the window, they install the window, they sell you the jam that goes on the outside, they do all the final fit and adjustment. Yeah. How, how ridiculous is that concept that like, these people are in charge of this aspect of the job and they're not us, they're the manufacturer. Yeah. That, that's, that's a huge... That's know. pretty sweet, and these are pretty sweet windows. Like, I don't ever see windows like this yep. at all. So when we use European windows in the United States, we get this too. This is a tilt turn. A lot of times they'll say, this is just for cleaning. Yeah. Uh, in Switzerland, it's for ventilation too because they don't really put in cooling. But if you turn the handle up, the window tips in. Yeah, nice cooling. So it can't get rain in. Yeah. You can't break in because you can't swing it open without the handle going all the way closed. It's secure, it's, you can leave it venting all day. Like now, that's cool, but what did you show me yeah, after? Yeah, so this was an accident that I discovered. I was just like, oh my, and then there's, this is a triple glazed vault door, basically, that this opening, yeah. I mean, this panel's four and a half feet, five feet wide. You, you could have a, a, a dang like porch out here, yeah. and you just jump out your window to this porch, and think about the airflow that you're gonna get in here, because this thing is so tight, like this is probably the only way you're gonna get fresh yeah. air in here, unless and, the ERV's running. Yep, and this is why you don't need cooling. Yeah. Because you can open a patio door in every bedroom. That's crazy, and the, like the, the solidity, the solidness, and yeah. like the rigidity of these windows are just, I'm kind of uh, kind of jealous, man. Like we need to up our window game like across the board because everywhere we've been on this trip, even the hotels, it doesn't matter. They're all like just yeah. a way better window. So anyway, this is Jake Bruton. Jake, where like where if somebody wanted to Jake Dot Bruton on Instagram, Build Show Network, or uh, Unbuild It Podcast. Oh, cool. So you're on the Build Show Network. Yeah. Nice. Hey, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Cool. Uh, let's see what else. You got any other cool things you've yeah, seen? Yeah, we look at another yeah. window. Yeah. So another cool detail on this build specifically, because there's a lot of similarities in the type of construction here. There's a lot of concrete in the main structure that they're using for like shear and strength, you know, in that um, capacity. But a lot of these ceilings are still the CLT or just, honestly, I think it's mostly just a laminated like glue lamb, eight inch thick uh, panel. That's, that's all it is. But this really was like, holy cow, I've never seen this. I take that back. I've seen a stud on the market. It's called the T stud and it has the same concept where you've got two studs inside and outside. And then when you, let's say you foam filled your wall cavity, it can create like almost a, or it's going to create a thermal break almost entirely, but this is also for sound. So this is like almost think of like a carpet pad about one inch thick. And I don't know how they've done this if it's glued because we couldn't see any fasteners, but this whole wall was a panel done at the factory with the gypsum board on one side that way they could still run all their utilities and then they just installed this thing so you'll notice up here they've got um basically dados ran through their top plate their bottom plate and these things are just secured i mean for the guys building these buildings it's got to be super easy just to pull up a whole panel that has a number on it that's associated with a certain spot and just put it in. So that's pretty cool. Going to get a little bit of extra sound control in your wall cavity, as well as a nice strong wall. You know, another thing I've seen a lot of here in Switzerland is this material, and this is a wood fiber insulation. So instead of using your fiberglass or cellulose, this is literally wood fibers, but um, I think that that's a little bit more green and that's why they use it. It's more sustainable. I'm just curious, what do you guys think? Like, does that make sense to you? I feel like maybe there's a fire potential with a wood fiber, but they sure do use a lot of it here in Switzerland. All right, pretty cool. We just got another job site in and we got one more to go check out today. This was multifamily slash commercial. And I think the next one's gonna be multifamily, but hopefully there's some more cool surprises and ways of building that we've never seen. So let's go take a look. Whew. Hey, what's up guys? So we're at the third job site and we're gonna go take a look at this one. It's another panelized wall system, but this one is way in the past compared to the other ones that have had a lot of finishes done to it. So let's go take a look at it. Uh, 
So I just found this on the ground of the job site and I didn't catch your name. Pete. Pete. Yes. But nice to meet you, Pete. Kyle. Kyle. Nice Look at this. These guys over here in Switzerland have the Pazload PPN 50, which is a strap shot gun for your metal connection, your metal fasteners. Pazload, let's go. Dude, we don't have it in the States yet. We don't have it. You don't have it? Nope. They're they having it's coming but we don't have it yet. These are the nails that they're using for shear, so they're metal connections down at the foundation. Basically, it's a strap shot gun and would be great for metal hangers, but uh, that's crazy. Yeah, you, you guys have those before us over here in Switzerland. We don't, we don't have them in the United States. Hmm. Do you like Pazload? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. We have, we awesome. Have other, it's a nice, this types. is your tool job site them. trailer then, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. I'd, I'd probably, this guy's gotta work. I'm literally taking him away from his job but uh, thanks for taking the time to show me, man. That's pretty cool. You're welcome. This is for all of you guys out there that comment on my videos. Why would a framer ever use Festool? That's, that's for guys in a shop or whatever. Well, I'm on a job site in Switzerland, and these are real carpenters building houses. And it's funny because I see Festool. I see more Festool. I've got uh, HEPA vacuum weight. Why would you have that on a job site? We've got what? A Capex? There's no reason that you would ever have Festool on a job site, but for some reason, these Swiss, these Swiss people who make very precise and very high quality structures, it's funny, they're all using uh, Festool. We've got Mafel, and I don't know what else we got here. Let's see, oh, we've got PPN50. Uh, they showed me this. They're using this to shoot all of their main structural brackets and components on. It's just really cool to see that, you know, us as Americans, we get real boxed in with what we think we should be using, but uh, the rest of the world is doing something, you know, completely different. We got all, they got all their Sega products here, which is obviously great fasteners. I just love seeing this job site trailer. Greg, look down here at all of the Simpson product. I don't know what these are. So we got epoxy here. We've got brackets. So a bunch of different tie down brackets, all these different fasteners. monster screws obviously when you're dealing with all these monster timber panels uh, we just got all sorts of large wood screws so very cool i was really thankful for the guys to let me come in here and take a look see what they had charging station all their tools pretty darn cool and you can use fest tool on a job site guys it's not going to hurt it it's what it was made for so we're up here on the second floor this is going to be a five-story residential uh, there's going to be a pitched roof so i don't know how they got away with the extra heights because the last one we were at was only four stories and they were capped out with the height requirement and we're only a couple miles away but all of these wall panels were made somewhere else and they're actually bringing them in the crane is up here right now uh, it looks like I can actually see this crane and that's at 20 meters out it can put up six metric tons which is pretty cool uh, if you guys remember that Magni that we had, that was a six metric ton machine, but I didn't have that kind of reach. So with this type of job site, obviously a crane is necessary and there's cranes everywhere. Every job site that I've seen in Switzerland that's new construction has a crane. And I think it's because they're really moving towards these, you know, panelized walls. I, just, I was just talking to one of the workers. Crazy thing is he actually recognized Greg and I from YouTube, which is awesome. But it kind of got us into talking and they started this job two and a half weeks ago. They're on the second deck putting walls in and they've actually only been doing the walls for one week. They spent the first week and a half just making sure that the foundation was perfectly level. So they had to go around, they put their bottom plate in, which is kind of like us in America putting our treated bottom plate on. But they also uh, use like a cement product to bring it up to perfectly level. And he was showing us where it was four centimeters low in some spots and five millimeters high in some spots. So, you know, no matter where you go, you always have to deal with those imperfections. But the important thing is that these walls are coming from a factory where they're made with a higher level of quality control, which means they're more accurate. When you've got a, an entire wall of shear with this OSB, you don't have movement. You can't flex it, you can't push it down. So it's gotta be perfect. So that's, that's one thing that is definitely a downside, but I think in the end a positive about this type of construction is you're getting super high quality panels and you're forced to bring everything into true plumb and level 
to make it work. Otherwise, it won't because it's already been made perfect, if that makes sense. So this job site is crazy. You'll notice down here, uh, because this whole floor, now the metric, the metric dimension is 24 centimeters, which is around, I didn't do the math, but it looks to be like maybe nine or 10 inches of laminated or glue lamb floor. So once again, just an entire floor structure of solid wood and then they've used the Sega wet guard because if it rains today, the last thing you want is that water to be soaking into this wood and causing any issues. So uh, it's a product I'd never seen before because we don't do this type of work, but it's pretty dang cool. All right, so I've been talking about these glue lamb panels for the ceilings, the floors. This is like a CLT product and it seems to be kind of the standard thing that's getting done on a lot of these projects. They're like these eight, nine, 10 inch floor systems. But I just saw how they actually put them together. You'll see this like dog bone. Think of like a bow tie on a table with a crack in it. They set these two panels down. They bring them together with the crane and then they're gonna take something like this. This is the X-Fix system. And you'll notice there's a number one and there's a number two. So you're gonna set the number one in here and then you're going to drop in number two and you're gonna pound it tight. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna draw these in nice and tight and you have the ability to move these right where you want them. And then it's gonna be locked in there forever. So no glue is used. It's just a pressure fit system. It's pretty darn, it's actually really cool. And uh, the more I see these CLT floor systems, the more I think like, I don't know, why, why don't we do more of that in the States? No floor joists. I guess the only downside I see is that you can't run electrical HVAC through the floor system. You have to be a little bit more thoughtful, like on the layout of the entire building. Yo guys, come down here to the basement. I wanted to show you these construction lights. Look at this. There's just a thin strip of LEDs that you can just run. It's on a roll. I don't know how long it is, but I'm guessing it's probably a hundred foot or so. And you just run it out wherever you want plugs into 110 here. You can kind of see it's just a simple, well, maybe it's not 110, but I'm assuming there's got to be some manufacturer in the United States that does something like this heavy duty. I'm not talking about the stuff that you put in your bedroom for your TikToks, but it's actually extremely bright and totally workable without those stupid LED bulbs that are strung every like 10 feet or so. So if you guys know anything about this, uh, drop me a comment down below because I'm interested and checking this out and getting some so that we have them for future jobs. Now check out this detail. This is definitely unique to Switzerland. This door is like eight inches thick and it's actually gonna cover up. Right now there's a temporary door here, but this is because by law in Switzerland, when you're building a residence like this, this multifamily residence, you have to have enough space for a potential war. So you gotta remember Switzerland went through World War I, World War II, all around them. So what I understood and what I had read before was that there's enough bomb shelters for every citizen. So if, if the builder of this multi-residence here does not have the bomb shelter included in the residence, they have to purchase additional space for the residents somewhere in the area so that in case of an emergency, they could go there. And I'm told that this one is gonna be completely ventilated. There's not gonna be water in there, so you have to stock it. But it's just crazy to think, we don't even think about that thing as, you know, American citizens, but something that goes into a residential build is a bomb shelter. It's just crazy. All right, well, that's the end of day three here on the Sega tour, and this was a really cool job site to take a look at. Definitely some features and details that I've never seen before. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like, uh, maybe subscribe. There's a bunch of other videos here on the Swiss construction tour, so go check those out as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll do talks or something. Okay, yeah, and then you got this picture of a cool detail, detail. that you can talk about. It's a good idea.